Armentor Art, YouTube number five. Armentorart.com. Artfreewill.com. Hi, and welcome to the Armentor Art channel. Today we're going to talk about airbrush maintenance. On my last video, I talked about this incomplete piece right here. I talked about how on my next video I was going to showcase this piece and what it's going to take to bring it to fruition to go ahead and finish it out. Uh, so you can go back there and look at that. It's got some interesting information about how to get to this point with a freehand shield method. And that's the method I use pretty much exclusively. I do a little tape off here and there, but I like the freehand shield method. I think it's really a lot more liberating and it gives a nice defined sharp look as you can see by looking at some of my artwork. Really like it. So when I went to make the video I realized that I neglected to clean out my airbrush properly. I know, bad artist. It happens. Try not to make a habit of it. I'll show you why in a minute. Um, in this particular case, it wasn't too bad. I just had some residue left over from a uh, one-shot job I did on my wife's Jeep. And it was really sticky. In fact, it really surprised me. The, the viscosity of the paint was such that it was literally shooting streamers out. And I had to really uh, be careful not to make a mess out of my little project there. The brush we're going to talk about today is an Iwata HPC+. Plus. Really good brush. Now the first thing you might note might notice is that I have this back piece taken off on my brush. This piece right here. And the reason being is that I just find that it's kind of an encumbrance, you know, it gets in my way. And what it is, is it's a stop action, okay? So when you pull back the trigger, it will literally keep the needle from going back too far and letting out too much material. When I was a novice, gosh, a long time ago, I think I did utilize it a bit, so I'm not knocking it. I think it's got some uses. Personally, I don't use it just because it just sort of gets in the way. I know the airbrush enough to where I don't need to stop. Right here you can see that mechanism. It screws in and out. It's got a little gasket on it. I'm not really sure why. It doesn't hold paint. Probably just to make it give it a little resistance right there so it doesn't just back out and fall out. You know, the engineers at Iowa are really smart. So, yeah, I'm not knocking it. I think that it's handy. I don't use it. I've noticed a lot of other airbrush artists that have a pretty good amount of experience don't use it either. They just take that backstop off of there. This is a top loader airbrush. I do have an aftermarket taller trigger on here. And the reason why I did that is it gives you more precise control. It's something that you got to buy above and beyond. It doesn't come with the airbrush. It's an extra. I get it from Coast Airbrush. And this is a dual action airbrush, meaning that when you push down on the trigger, it lets the air out. When you pull back, it lets the paint out. So push down and pull back. And you can use varying degrees of each one of them to get different effects. I think typically I hammer down on the air, and I just use a regulator that I'll show you here in a minute to, to regulate the air to something that's, you know, in the ballpark of what I need. I might subconsciously let up on this trigger a little bit, but I really don't think I'd do it a whole lot. That's one of the good things about making these videos is it really makes me think about why I'm doing things. And I think it would, in the end, help me in my technique as I'm trying to help y'all understand, you know, what airbrush is all about and uh, some of the pitfalls that you may run into when you're starting out or, you know, experienced people might get something out of it too.
this is also an HPC. It's not a plus. It's just a regular HPC. Don't really know what the difference is, but I'm sure it's something good. Um, and the reason why this one is disassembled right now is uh, I left paint in there a little too long. And something happened with a little O-ring that's way down inside there. So when I was using the brush, paint would leak out and get all over. Ugh, you don't want that. It was pretty nasty. So it's in the hospital right now. I believe I did already buy a gasket for it. I'm thinking, yeah, actually, I remember now I was talking to the good people at Coast, and they sold me a gasket. I have no idea what I did with it, but I'm sure it was a, I did something smart with it. <laughs> you ever do that? You're, you're tearing apart your place, and you're like, what did I do with it? Oh, I'll put it right where it should go. So, probably did that. Nothing to worry about. It'll show up when I need it. I like to have a few airbrushes going at one time, just because, you know, stopping and cleaning it out is a pain. But, you know, you got to be sure you stop and clean it out. Here is a custom Micron. You can see I did away with the trigger on that. I have the taller trigger adaptation on this one also. And you can see how the cup is much smaller. It's a little dirty. Come on, James, get it together. You need to really maintain your airbrushes. But, you know, it's a working shop, as I said in my previous videos. So it's a small shop. Sometimes things don't get done to the nth degree like I would like. Uh, that's neither here nor there. This brush is in really good operating condition fabulous brush for doing really fussy small detail. I wouldn't recommend it for laying something out like that, but when you're going in to hit your final touches, custom Micron, this is a custom Micron B. Not really sure what the difference is, is in between them. I think one's got a side loader, one's got maybe a bigger cut, but I like this brush. It's really cool. Uh, you can't get too carried away with it because obviously it doesn't have a lid on it. That's a custom Micron. A much smaller pattern than the uh, HPC Plus. Here's a cap for an HPC. It just fits right over the bowl. That way you can you can get inverted without. Oh my God! Ah! I don't pay everywhere. My life is over. You know, some motorcycle dude's gonna come beat the snot out of me. So. You know, it's handy. I've used it on occasion. Not a whole lot, because I don't really do bikes much anymore. But uh, when I do, I would probably keep this on here, because on a bike, you're going to get cantilevered over. You know, you're going to you're gonna be hitting some angles. Um, and I can show you a little bit on that in future videos. That's a little hook there to keep you coming back. If you're interested in motorcycle work, I've done my fair share. You know, and there's nothing wrong with it. I liked it, but I just want to do fine art now so I can just do what I want to do. And when I don't feel like doing it, I don't have some motorcycle builder breathing down my neck because it was pretty hairy. Uh, and it's got a little bitty hole in it. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's got a little hole in it. Man, make sure that sucker doesn't get clogged up because if it does, it's not going to... It's, it's going to still draw paint, but it's going to do it inconsistently. And you'll be going along and then just all of a sudden... <laughs> You know, and it'll spit on you. Now, Iwatas are not prone to spitting. Great airbrush, but, you know, it's like anything else. It's a mechanical device. If you don't have, uh, you know, if you don't have a pathway for the paint to go forward correctly, you're going to end up with problems. You don't want that. So, you just kind of watch it as you're going along when you're using the cap. Make sure that little air breather hole is open. It's itty bitty tiny. It's easy to pass that up, and then you're, you're going along, you're like, you know, what the hell's wrong with my airbrush? It's, you know, it's going wild on me. Um, here is an HP BE-1. I don't think they make this brush anymore. I was looking for parts for it the other day, and I couldn't find any. Uh, but I talked to the guy at, the good guy at uh, Coast Airbrush, and he sold me what I needed. I needed an air cap for it right here. This sucker right here. Mucho dinero, let me tell you. And this one is a bottom loader, and it's made obviously to move a whole bunch of pipe. Yes, a metric crap ton of pipe. A pipe, <laughs> sorry. Paint. It's made to use a whole lot of paint. So, uh, 
Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, you could paint uh, really large surfaces with this uh, that you couldn't really do with just an HPC or an HP. It just puts a lot of paint on the surface. And it's got this little gesture right here, which is actually pretty cool, you know. Uh, and it allows you to set the fan size. And it's got a little back note on it. So you can get a really wide pattern with this. It's a pretty cool brush. I've used it to some success on different occasions. I don't usually do work that big, but uh, hope to. You know, hope to. Real soon in the future, I'm sure I will. I like to do big stuff too. You know, hey, stretch your horizons a little bit. Why not? Um, real quick, back onto the HPC here. I airbrush with the air cap off. All right, I just take that sucker off. I water is the only airbrush I know of that you can take the little end cap off and still airbrush. And I found that it just you know you get a better, cleaner pattern. There's just less stuff for the for the paint to build up on there. It's just one less thing to go wrong, basically. So that's pretty neat. I think it's really nice that you're able to do that with the eye water. Um, to clean the brush, I just use a commercially available paint gun cleaning set right here. Yeah, I really like it. It's got everything you need. It's got small brushes here, itty bitty ones. I use this medium brush a bit. It's got a nice brush here. It's got these little bitty, kind of like paint brush. Do boppers, do boppers here, to clean out little parts, little fussy parts on the inside. And uh, I've got some good pictures of an exploded airbrush that I took apart uh, to show you, you know, what it looks like on the inside. It's kind of hard to do that on video, so I'm just going to scab in some uh, some pictures and uh, talk about it a little bit with a voiceover. Probably the best. You know, I'm going to put some uh, put some verbiage up there. You know, I'm not real crazy about YouTube videos that go and put a bunch of writing and not talk. You know, if I wanted to read, I would just read something on the internet. That's why I'm on YouTube to watch a video. But, hey, you know, I'm going to do it. So uh, I'll try to read what's on the screen as it's going on. I'm going to pull you out of my little satchel here. This is what I use to, uh, to make my YouTube videos. It's a paint stick. A magnet and some wire some fire alarm wire yes I'm a little bit of a weirdo but it works it's uh it was quick and easy gets the job done much shop so small I really can't have a tripod in here I just end up running into it there's my paint cabinet got some HOK there house of color love it awesome paint It's an old fire alarm cabinet. I talk about that a little bit in my first video. I'm trying to hold the camera real still here for you guys because I know that uh, that first video made me kind of seasick. It's Mopar, Mopar, no car. And not everybody feels the same way, but obviously I'm kind of a Mopar nut. If you ever need Mopar parts, I recommend Summit Racing. Really cool guys, man. They they know their stuff. They got good pricing. Here's some small mixing cups. Duster puzzle. Never put it together. I don't know why I bought it. I don't have time for puzzles. <laughs> yeah, but you know, hey, it looks cool on the shelf, so why not? There's some entertainment. You know, I'm in here hours after hours, so I listen to all kinds of things. History, Star Wars, audiobooks, really cool, because they got sound effects. Here's some books that I've had for time of memorial. Reference books. There's that piece that I was talking about earlier. I don't have a name for it yet. Wildflower, or Space Flower, or something like that. There's a little airbrush drawer that I made out of uh, 
alarm cabinet door. <laughs> Works pretty good. I got it sitting on the Unistrut. There's that exploded airbrush. All the parts right there. That little air cap right there, man, be careful with that sucker. It is crazy expensive. Where is it at? Air cap, you're going to freak out when you see it. It's so small. There it is. There it is. Look at that. Golly. Look at that little guy right there. Yeah, and they give you a spanner. Okay, so that's, that's technical terminology for a wrench. It's a spanner. That spanner fits on there, and it's about 20,000 times too big. <laughs> so don't get crazy and tighten this thing. I've done it, man. Snaps it off. Then you got to get it out. Then it's going to cost you about $45 for a new one. 45 bucks. Ouch. Here's a dual airbrush holder. <laughs> Friend of mine asked me, I don't see how you can just sit there and talk on those videos like that. It's amazing. I said, dude, I can sit there and talk to the wall like this. I don't really even need a video. Ask anybody who knows me. That's a dual airbrush holder. Really cool. I mean, it just fits right in there. Voila. That's, there it is in French. Huh? What do you think about that? That's freaking awesome. I don't usually pop for stuff like that, but it was kind of a package deal. Here's a little airbrush cleaner thing I bought. The airbrush just fits in there. Wham! Okay. Bam! There you go. There you go. You just got a little air vent with a filter on it. <laughs> Pretty cool. There's some shop light. Acrylic enamel. That's what I was painting my wife's Jeep with the other day. It's just one shot. Comes out. Gets hard. It was pretty much freaked me out. I mean, that was, that was crazy. You, know, you had to be real careful because it came out real stringy. I wasn't expecting that. So, you know, in when you're doing automotive paint, you're kind of like a, a mad chemist, a mad scientist. Um, there's going to be things that you don't expect. You just got to keep your calm. Don't get too excited. You know, stay cool. Carry on. It's going to be okay. You know, most things that you screw up, you can go back in with sandpaper and fix it. Believe it or not. I call myself a custom sander because <laughs> that's really what I end up doing a lot of times is sanding down my screw ups. Here's a speed air desiccate filter and desiccate. It's just that same stuff that comes in your grandma's pills, you know, or I guess everybody's on pills now. So the same thing that comes in your heart medication or whatever to keep the moisture out of the pills so it doesn't dissolve. I personally don't take any pharmaceuticals because I think they're crap. I think it's a scam. But we'll get into that some other time. How's that sound? Don't get on your horse, James. Settle down. It's going to be okay. Here's a regulator. Okay. I'll put a gauge on there so I can see what my air pressure is. I'm a sprinkler fitter by trade. So I made it pretty handy to put on all this galvanized stuff. There's a fire sprinkler right there. It's a concealer head. Here's my filter. I go in depth in other videos about my filter system. Okay, well, I think I've rambled on enough. Maybe not. There's always a little bit more in my mind that I'd like to relate. I just like talking about it. It's so neat. You know, kind of makes it a little bit more exciting to talk about it. It's my little paint mixing area right here. I just take these different bottles that have different, this is retarder, have different chemicals in them. I just mix it right here, you know. I'm not painting an ocean liner, so small areas is good for me. So let's say I was going to, uh, paint with this brandy wine I would use reducer and everybody says that the right consistency for airbrush is the consistency of milk and they're right about that but you know what's the consistency of milk how does that work I don't have a cow handy 
it's just something you got to learn. I mean, there's no real formula for it, okay? But what you're going to notice when you airbrush is things are going to start drying on the tip of your needle. It's really kind of irritating, especially if you're using something with high solids like white. All right, so that's where this retarder comes in right here, okay? It's not a reducer, it's a retarder, okay? And what it does is it literally keeps the paint from drying fast above and beyond your slow reducer. So I have some slow reducer. I don't use anything faster than a slow reducer because I'm just talking, you know, a little micro fussy stuff. You know, this is this is fussy stuff. You know, you're you're spraying out just just the smallest amount of paint with just the slightest amount of air. So just a little bit of adjustment and everything goes wild. So you don't really need to use medium or fast reducer unless you're just outside in the heat. You know, unless you're in a heat, that's what you need a medium fast reducer for. And you just don't get in that kind of situation much in my shop. And you shouldn't really an airbrush because it's really hard to airbrush when you're sweating. <laughs> it just isn't going to work out too well for you. So that's one of the challenges you're going to have. You know, you're going to have to, if you're going to do it like I'm doing it, you're going to have to be in a conditioned space. That's why I don't move air outside. I capture it all with that. I use fresh air from the other room because I don't really want to kill myself just to make art. You know, I wouldn't do it if I had to. Well, maybe I would, but, you know, you don't want to die just for your art. I know you have to suffer for your art, but you don't want to kill yourself. So that's something to keep in mind. This stuff is dangerous. It's got methyl ethyl ketone in it, which is badass stuff. And a one way around that is you can use water-based paint, but I tell you what, you know, it's a lot harder for me to work with. Maybe somebody else who's, you know, a little bit more in the know of the technology could say, ah, you know, that armature guy, he's full of it. He always talking about, you know, water-based paint's fine. Well, maybe it is. And I, and, I, and I have used it. I used it at Canvas Combat to a pretty good degree, but I don't know, it's just... I guess I'm just a house of color addict, that's all I can tell you. That's just how it is. I like the stuff. It's really good. It smells good. I don't just sit there and huff it, but, you know, when it's hanging around in the air after it's pretty much dissipated, it smells pretty good. You smell PPG, it smells terrible. This shop line right here? Ah! Ah! Bad. It just smells bad, and I don't know what it is with that. You know, and I, I used to work with a guy, great painter taught me a lot. <sighs> Coach Works Kingsley down there in Santa Fe, real good guy. Um, and he, you know, kind of clued me in that PPG kind of smells funny. And he's right. After he said that, I never could use it again, effectively, unless I just needed to. Shop line. It's the cheap stuff. But, you know, it was good enough for what I needed. You don't always have to use the best of everything. I keep trying to tell myself that. But, uh, you know, if you get in the habit of trying to use quality materials 90% of the time, you're just going to be happier. You know, life is short. And it, you don't need to be running around all tacked off because you use some crap that isn't working too good, you know. And, you know life's too short for that. All right. Well, I guess I've rambled on enough. <laughs> thank you for listening. And uh, thank you for uh, tuning into the Armentor Art Channel. We're going to get over to that... Uh, to that exploded view of that Iwata HPC so you can uh, have a good look at what's going on inside there and take some of the intimidation out of it because every once in a while care how careful you are blowing it out with one of these yabbies you're gonna have to get in there and clean it and you just need to be careful stay calm carry on everything's gonna be just fine okay thanks a lot all right, as promised, as you can see here, it's a broken down Iwata HPC Plus. If you'll direct your attention to the top left, that is the air valve body. There's a few different pieces in there. You can always go on Iwata's website to get the complete breakdown. There's some gaskets, a little spring, a little piston in there. But I've never really had any trouble with it, so I've never had to break it down to its little individual components. 
um, to check it out or clean it or anything. I just put a little bit of oil on the top. And if you look at my previous video, I believe I show some oil that I've used, you know, in the airbrush to uh, to go for it to kind of lube that up right there. All it is is some basic light machine oil. There's nothing special. You do want to take some precautions. You don't want to get it all over the place because oil and uh, automotive paint they don't get along. So you don't want to contaminate your paint area but that particular part the air valve body is far enough away from uh, where your paint goes in the brush it shouldn't be an issue you can also oil the trigger and if you look to the right there it shows the aftermarket tall one trigger piece one piece trigger that is and uh, that's really neat because the uh, Iwata Standard trigger is a two-part mechanism with a little piston at the bottom and the trigger is a lot shorter I think that's a really great adaptation. I get it from Coast Airbrush It wasn't a whole lot of money. It wasn't real super expensive and it was it was a good investment It made a big difference in the agility of the brush I'm not sure if Iwata makes it or who does but uh, it's available commercially available So I recommend getting it um, right to the left of the tall one trigger, one piece trigger, is the fluid nozzle. That little sucker there is fragile. Not only is it fragile, but it's easily broken. Um, what I do when I put it on the airbrush, after I've had it off and cleaned it up and disassembled it and stuff, and I'm putting it back on, I put it on the fluid needle down there near the spanner wrench and uh, use that to guide it onto the airbrush so I don't drop it. And I learned that the hard way. I think I lost one once. They're about 40 bucks. And you know, you probably have to buy it online or something. So it'll definitely shut you down if you mess that up. Just uh, use extreme caution with that. And the fluid needle right at the end, it's very, very fragile. So. That's, a, that's an area to be very cautious there. You don't want to throw the brush down or drop it or anything else because the, new, the needle's not cheap either. And if you ruin both of them, you know, you're, you're going to be in for 70 bucks by the time it's done with. Ouch. <laughs> not going to be real happy after that. I know I wasn't. I'm speaking from experience there. Um, below the, uh, the spring air valve guide. body is a trigger guide. It's just a one piece, you know, piece of uh, stainless looks like. And uh, there's really no need to, to get real fussy with that. I just take a Q-tip or something clean it out if it gets a little junk in there. Uh, next to that is the needle spring. Same thing. Uh, you know, just take a, doesn't really get a lot of material on it, you know, because it's, it's all away from the paint. So if it gets a little junk on it, you just take a brush and clean it up real good. You might need a little solvent. I use uh, just shop grade uh, lacquer thinner. So, you know, nothing real fancy there. Um, the needle chucking guide, it does tend to get a little funky. You might need to run a really small pipe cleaner through there, like I showed in the video. Some of the smaller, I just get that whole set. It comes in handy. I think I paid 35 bucks for it, which seems like a lot of money for pipe cleaners, but it's all there. It's, you know, it's right there in one piece. And it's got a nice little case that you put it in. Uh, you can get that from TPG Global. They sell automotive paint stuff. They're kind of a supplier. Uh, you might could get it from Coast Airbrush. They probably have some kind of cleaning kit like that. I didn't buy it from them. I couldn't even tell you why. I was probably just looking around and uh, needed it, bought it. Um, next to the needle chucking guide there is the auxiliary level lever. That sucker right there is kind of a pain uh, to get it back in the right spot. You got to be real careful not to drop it and lose it like all the other little parts. 
but it goes in a certain way so when you take the airbrush apart you need to look it you can't put it in backwards you'll know when you do it because nothing's gonna happen it's kind of a springy little thing uh, and it just gives some action to the uh, needle chucking guide which actually moves back and forth with the with the needle obviously Next to that is the nozzle cap. Now that does have to be installed and it needs to be tight. Uh, not super tight, but it's got a little kernel on there where you can put a little oomph on it. Uh, if it's not, you're going to have some performance problems. Um, same with the fluid nozzle, the one that's circled up there. That's what the spanner wrench is here at the bottom. It's for the fluid nozzle. Be really super duper careful when you put that thing on. It's easy to twist it off. You just got to really get zen. If you're feeling a little frustrated, I'd recommend, you know, take a break. Don't, you know, uh, snap that thing off because then you're in a world of hurt. Next, that's a needle cap. Um, it's good for really atomizing wide patterns. But if you're doing a little fussy detail, I take it off. I don't really ever brush with that on. I find that it just, it it collects paint and material and it just seems to cause more problems than it would ever solve. If I'm shooting a large area and I really need some good atomization, I think I have put it on in the past. But you got to be really mindful of it because it'll tend to load with the material and then spit it out onto your surface if you forget about it. So, you know, it's one of those things where you got to stay on it. Um, that brush cleaning kit that I was showing earlier has little itty bitty brushes that you can use to put a little thinner on there some lacquer thinner and just dab it on that uh, needle cap if you're using it if you feel like you need to use it um, over to the far left I didn't call it out but that's like a needle chuck and that actually screws on to the uh, needle chucking guide so it actually holds the needle steady and when you uh when you reassemble the brush you want to be careful to have the needle the fluid needle all the way into the nozzle don't force it because you can break that nozzle that way but it needs to go all the way home so you got to kind of watch that if you don't you're going to have some performance issues it's going to too much paint's going to come out sometimes you might have an issue with dried up paint being inside the fluid nozzle where it feels like it's home but it's really not and the symptom that you get from that is when you when you put down on the uh, airbrush trigger you're gonna get a little paint when you start you know moving air across it you're gonna get paint if you're getting paint without pulling back because you know it's a dual action then you are really not seating correctly between the fluid nozzle and the fluid needle and it's usually just a little bit of dried paint it doesn't take very much it could be anything in there so you want to be real careful to notice the symptoms of issues that you're having with your brush and uh, proper brush maintenance is real important uh, to prevent those kind of problems to keep it from you know messing up your piece you did a lot of prep work to even get to this point more than likely so the last thing you want to do is when you're going hammering down to uh, to end up with some kind of spit or other residual issue when you push down your air trigger you start getting some paint uh, you don't want that so just be real mindful when you do it before you go to your piece you might have a little scrap piece of paper especially when you're starting out to kind of see what the performance of the brush looks like and that will change especially when you use an automotive paint with what kind of temperatures in the room and uh, you know how much air pressure you're pushing out of the uh, out of the regulator so it's just one of those things just relax take it easy don't get all wound up um, and just be mindful of the performance of the brush and that will really help you get good results without a whole lot of stress because last thing an artist needs is more stress in his or her life. <laughs> Being creative isn't always, you know, a bed full of roses. Which if you're watching this video to the end, you probably already know that. I'm not telling you anything new there. So, 
anyway, uh, you know, I don't have a lot of issues out of the Iwata. Can't say enough good things about it. Super duper brush. All this information that I'm showing you here is online. That's where I got the, the names for them because I, I didn't know the technical names before I looked them up. So I kind of learned a little something new myself. It's good to know that because when you call up your supplier, you can't say, hey, you know, my Hoosier Doodle broke and it goes into Dumaflagey. You know, <laughs> you kind of got to know just the basics of what you're talking about. Hopefully this video has, has led you uh, to have a basic knowledge of how the brush is assembled and some of the performance issues that you may run across when you don't really have it clean all the way as uh, I found out when I went to finish the piece that I'm going to show you in my next video. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you like what I'm saying, hit the like button, subscribe. I plan to make more videos, just, you know, kind of outline some of the things that I've learned over the years of doing this and uh, help out my fellow artists so they're not banging their head against the wall like I did for so many years trying to really figure this out. Um, you're still going to end up doing some of that, but I had some resources from people uh, who made videotapes, cassette tapes back in the day. Uh, Vince Goodeve and uh, Craig Frazier. Those guys, they didn't have to, but they did, you know, they gave out some information. So I'm just trying to pay it forward, you know, pay it back. So people have a basic working knowledge of what's going on with their airbrush when they have some problems. If you're having problems, you know, uh, make a comment and I'll uh, try to enlighten your way a little bit. Hopefully, uh, maybe learn something from you in the process. All right. Well, thanks a lot.